Greetings and salutations. Welcome to our latest tech tips on Synastry Chat. Our focus is to connect you with the best tools to make your rides longer, harder, and dirtier. So you want to ride a grand cycling adventure without getting lost, but you don't have the budget for a dedicated fancy GPS computer, right? I feel you. I'm a cheap bastard myself sometimes. You probably aren't keen on risking your brand new fancy smartphone either that your whole life kind of revolves around. I get it. Avoiding hurting yourself, your bike, that's enough to worry about. Why well, worry about a phone too? I can assure you, over the years we've dealt with more lost phones, broken phones, than we have lost riders or broken bike. Well, I'm here to make your day a little bit better and hopefully keep your wallets a little fatter. Be sure to stick around until the end when I show you how to make this setup as useful as possible. Hi, I'm Kevin with Spinistry. We've been hosting ultra endurance gravel mountain bike, and bikepacking events since 2010. Probably to date, we've hosted over 300 events and probably over 25,000 participants. We absolutely love helping folks get their adventure on. Yes, in this video, I will definitely show you the most economical way to set up dependable navigation without breaking the bank. We will share affiliate links in the video description if you wanna find some of the details on the products that we do touch on. Firstly, I do wanna say, I do believe a dedicated navigation, bike computer, GPS device for cycling is the best long-term solution, particularly if you know you're gonna need these capabilities for years to come. Go ahead and work a good computer into your budget as soon as it's feasible. However, the solution we're talking about today is perfectly feasible if you're new to cycling, and not really sure if you're in it for the long term yet or working on a really limited budget. <laughs> Realistically, this is gonna cost most people anywhere from free to maybe 30 or 40 bucks. I already had everything laying around the house, so it was basically a free setup for me. <music> Enough shenanigans. Let's get serious here. Side note, I, I met my first wife at a bar called Shenanigans. Not lying. So the specific details on this first step are very important. Pay attention. Don't miss anything here. Without it, the rest doesn't really matter. Remember when you got your latest brand new fancy phone that you don't want to risk exposing to the weather or damage in a bicycle crash or whatever else? Most likely you still have your old phone tucked away somewhere. Go get it, charge it up, power it up, tap into a Wi-Fi connection. No, you don't have to have phone service for that phone to work and be useful. Be sure to delete all the old crap. Get rid of all that incriminating evidence from shenanigans, if you know what I mean. Did you actually lose or break your old phone or trade it in or whatever? No worries. I bet someone in your house has an old Android or iPhone put away somewhere as well. Oh, did I forget to mention this takes a smartphone? Those of you who still using flip phones are out of luck on this one, but who are we kidding? They're not watching this anyway, are they? Still haven't chased down a free phone? No worries. You can get an old used Android for next to nothing off of Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, or even eBay. Heck, if you really need to, you can get an Android 10 phone brand new for 50 bucks or less. Now you can download the free versions of Ride with GPS, Strava, whatever other navigation, workout, bike related, cycling related apps you, that you want to. Quick caveat though, lots of time navigation functionality uh, takes, a, takes access to a subscription service, but stick around. I, I have a workaround. Really the only thing you need to add at this point to have a functioning system is some sort of phone mount to put it on the bike. You don't want to wrap duct tape around your handlebar stem. 
I had this one laying around uh, that I use on the trainer. The biggest drawback realistically for utilizing a phone as your primary navigation and bicycle computer is the battery life. Keeping that display on full time is really gonna chew up a battery, particularly if you're using an old phone and the battery that's there might be kind of tired already. The solution is easy enough. Just add a power bank to the system. Realistically, you can get these for, you can get a two pack for around 20 bucks. Obviously under 20 bucks for just one. With the phone on the stem or the handlebar, you gotta put the battery pack somewhere as well. Most of y'all already have a top tube bag or handlebar bag of some sort. So that should be a freebie for most folks. Again, eh, go to a bike shop, Amazon, whatever else, Craigslist. Personally, uh, for this setup, I prefer the top tube bag that kind of acts like a saddle bag and straddles the top tube. That way, the battery itself is a little heavy sometimes. It, if you have a true top tube bag, it can make the bag top heavy and kind of shift off to the side. It's one of those things that just kind of bothers me when I'm riding. I keep trying to push it over. Functionally, it's fine. It's just one of those irritating things that gets into my head. Maybe not yours. Realistically, with that setup, you're good to go for an all day and maybe even a multi-day adventure. Here's another quick tip. Make sure the phone is put in airplane mode. That'll make a big difference in saving battery life right there. But make sure the GPS is on. You're welcome. But wait, there's more. Everything we've talked about so far still seems to work really well on a super old, super cheap, super nothing Android phone that I had laying around. Um, that's basic functionality. This one's on Android 5. I think that goes back to 2016 or so, maybe, I'm not sure. This will do the basic functionality for route navigation, tracking stuff for Strava and so forth. Uh, some folks may want some more advanced features that an older Android or iOS version may not be able to care for. Realistically, from a practical perspective, if you're going towards those next levels that we're about to touch on here, you probably want Android 10 or newer, one of the more recent iOS updates to have the full functionality that you're capable of. Yes, phones can work with heart rate monitors. You can use a Bluetooth heart rate monitor and Strava and Ride With GPS will sh show and record that heart rate data. That's really important for some of those all day rides and training purposes for a long, hard and dirty event. Phones will also work with speed and cadence sensors. Now this next one should work with any phone with Bluetooth capability, probably don't need an, a newer version. I am a big fan of bone conducting headphones. The reality is you can hear navigation prompts, more on that soon, listen to an audiobook, listen to music or whatever, but it's not gonna interfere with your on the road hearing. That's, that's, a, that's a big thing. You really don't wanna be that asshat with earbuds, or even worse, a Bluetooth speaker. I like Ram Jam and Golden Earring as much as the next guy, next old guy. But I really don't want to listen to that tinny distorted version shooting up from between your legs going down the road, all right? As far as earbuds go, I'm gonna tell this one story. Hopefully it gets my point across. Like I said, we've done lots of events over the years. Mostly, on, mostly gravel grinders, which means most of the time people are kind of riding around in the middle of nowhere, mostly by themselves, not a lot of traffic to deal with. Well, there's this one time going to pick up a downed rider. Wasn't a true emergency for 911, but you know, somebody that couldn't make it back. And so following the route to go pick them up. And I come up behind a couple riders taking up most of the road. Got as close as I could without annoying them. They didn't see me or hear me or whatever. They weren't paying any attention to me whatsoever. Rev the engine a little bit, still nothing. It's like, I gotta get through here and these folks are taking up the whole road. They're not looking behind them. And I noticed they're just kind of bobbing their heads along and they've got, they've got the earbuds going. So I had to toot the horn, 
try to do it as friendly as possible, but scared the P-Wadden out of them. And they jumped and finally scooted off to the side and I waved at them as I went by. Thought they saw who it was, saw they saw the spinistry sticker. Um, but later that night I saw, I saw them complaining about rude black Jeep on the gravel roads during the route. Take that for what it's worth. Like I mentioned earlier, the beauty of the headphones with the Ride With GPS navigation is you get turn-by-turn -turn navigation prompts just like in a car GPS. That's something that's a little bit different from the cycling computers themselves. You know, on a Wahoo or a Garmin or what Hammerhead, whatever else, you'll get an audio alert that there's a turn approaching most of the time, but it doesn't say turn on Kevin's Road in a quarter mile. And once you make that turn, next turn in three miles on Lee Road, whatever else. It's really an awesome way to navigate a gravel route. And we do it on the Rattlin 1000 all the time. You can do a thousand miles and I'm sure more. We haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, I can already hear some of you screaming at the screen. Turn by turn navigation is not free on Ride With GPS. Make no mistake, I'm a fan of Ride With GPS and I highly encourage anyone that might be using the tool to subscribe to it. But I'm gonna show you how it's not a requirement to be a subscriber to navigate on the route. First off, you can get a free trial and try it out, see if it's worth your investment. I highly encourage that just to make sure it, it suits your needs. Also, turn by turn navigation functionality is included for all riders whenever you sign up for a spinistry event or one of the spinistry routes for self-navigation that we put out. You can access the routes and ride with GPS navigations included. Additionally, for club spinistry members, our entire routes library over 1,100 routes right now is always available to access for navigation on Ride With GPS. Also, an additional bonus for Club Spinistry members, if you have a route you, a route you create yourself and you want it added to that Club Spinistry library, just send it my way. I'll add it to the library. We'll notate it as a member sourced route and you can access it yourself at that point for Ride With GPS navigation functionality. And we'll also make it available to everyone else as well. Please like, share, and subscribe if you found this useful. Feel free to comment below if we missed something important or if you have something you wanna share with us or tell us we did wrong. We welcome all other tips and suggestions. Stay tuned for more cycling tips from Spinistry.